Hi, this is Lance Culver and this is going to be a tie flow tutorial. This is an update to a video I posted a year or two ago on how to create an auto rig using tie binds. There was a few changes to tie flow some time ago that interfered with it a little bit and required the user to take an additional step or two. I've changed the setup a little bit. It works a lot better and it's a little bit easier to set up but does require a few additional tie binds. So I have a simple model of a truck with a chassis and four tires. Anything will work. I'm going to create some very rough geometry around this to serve as the bone and tie flow. Okay, something like this for the chassis. And then we're going to create a tube for the tires. Going to make a couple copies and align them to these other tires. Okay, we can also go ahead and rename this helper chassis. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is create a box. I'm going to rotate this box upright and then align it to the center of one of these tires and I'll make a copy and align it to this other front tire. So now they're in the center. I'm going to create another box and I'll rotate it down 90 degrees and I'm going to align it to, to the center of the box. And then I'm going to align it to the chassis, but only on the X position and on the pivot. So now the pivot of the object is centered with the chassis. Drag it up, and then I'm going to make a copy, lower it some. It's not 100% important, but I'm lining up the bottom of this box with the bottom of this box and the bottom of it here with the top of it in here. But again, it's, it's not 100% important. And I'm going to take both of these and switch to rotate and change to local. I also want to make sure this is at the end. And I'm going to rotate these down five degrees. And then I'm going to make two copies, rotate around 170 degrees so that they match. And then switch to move. Again, make sure it's on local. And then drag, oh, select the other two boxes and drag them over until they pretty much make contact or so with these other little boxes here. Next, I'm going to create another box. Something like this. I'm going to align it to the chassis. And I'm going to align it to one of these tires, but only on the Y and Z, and I'm going to center it. All right, now real quick, just a couple more. Create a long skinny box and rotate it down 90 degrees. Then I'll make a copy of it. Shorten it and then make it just a little bit bigger. And both of these I'm going to align to the chassis. But only for center. And then I'm also then going to align to one of these tires. But only on the Y. Alright, two more boxes. I'm align this one to this box here. The pivot. And I'll slide it down. Let's see here. Go ahead actually and take. Go ahead and align this box to these control arm boxes. I'll slide this one in. Okay, now I'm going to rotate this one down 90 degrees. And then make a copy, rotate it around 180 degrees. 
and select both boxes. Drag them away. Make sure you're on local. Bring them down a little bit and then we can rotate them slightly. It'll take 20 tie binds for this setup. But we basically just align these tie binds, say, to each of the tires. And then we can add the parts for each of these. Say, so for the bottom one, I'm going to choose the tire. And for the top one, I'm going to choose this knuckle. And then same thing for this one. And then for these, for the top object, I'm going to choose the box and the bottom one, the tire. Then we can select each of these tie binds and then add a tie bind settings modifier. Go ahead and increase the scale some. We can see it outside here. Make it easy to find them. Turn that icon off. And we can just leave all this at its default settings. All right, next I'm going to align a bind to this box over here. Let's do pivots. And then I'm going to align one to this box here. And then I'm going to select both those tie binds and then align them to this box back here. But do center, but not do the X. And then I'm going to raise those about up here at the top of the tires or so. It doesn't matter. Somewhere up here. And then I'll select one and for the top bind object, I'm going to select the chassis and for the bottom one, I'm going to select this box. Same thing for this one. Okay, I'll select them both. Add a tie bind settings modifier. And then for these, I'm going to enable the limits. Okay, and then I'm going to enable the movement settings. I'll go ahead and add a couple zeros to this thing. We'll adjust it later. And then I can unlock the X axis. As you can see here, that way these binds will be allowed to move up and down. And they'll act as the shock absorbers. Okay, next I'm going to align a tie bind to this box here. But I'm going to do pivots. And I'm also going to align the orientation. And then I'll align one to the bottom one down here. And same thing with this box. And then same thing with this box. All right, then I'm going to select each of these tie binds. And then with local selected, I'm going to move them over so they're about to the end of these boxes. But if they're not perfect, they're in the same position, so it's fine. And then for these, for the top object, I'm going to select upper control arm here. And then for the bottom would be this box. And then same thing for these. All right, now I'm gonna select all four of these and add a tie bind settings modifier. Reduce the size of the icon. Notice their orientation. Go and shut that icon off. All right, then next I'm going to align four more of these tie binds to these four boxes. And then this time for the upper object, I'm going to select the chassis. And then for the lower object, the relative box. And then same thing, select all four of these, add a tie bind settings modifier. And I'm gonna lower the size of the icon. And then I want to rotate each one so that they're vertical. 
And then for these, we can enable the twist settings and add a bunch of zeros here. Also enable drive. And then next, I'm gonna line a tie bind to each one of these boxes here, and then select them both, slide them all the way over, so they're about in the center here. I'm using this bind as a visual representation. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then two more tie binds, one to each of these. And then for the top object, I'll select this long box, and for the lower one, the little box. Same thing on this side. And then for that tie bind tucked away in there, for the upper object, I'm going to select the box here. And then for the lower object, I'm going to select this knuckle. And the same thing on this one. All right now I can select these other three, add a tie bind settings modifier, reduce the size of the icon shut it off and then here in the swing setting limits i'm going to give each of these a five degree allowance all right so now if these tires are moving up and down and this is connected to the chassis or will be these don't get pinched up that gives them a little bit more freedom to move all right and then lastly going to align to the pivot of the long box and then to the pivot of this last one. For the top object, select this long box and for the bottom one, this end one. Add a tie bind settings modifier, enable limits on the twist settings and shut off the icon. And then for this last one, for the upper object would be the chassis, the lower object would be this box. You can add a tie bind settings modifier Go ahead and rotate that down 90 degrees. And then for this, we can enable the limits and give it maybe a negative 40 and 40. Go ahead and rotate that around just so I can use it in the visual representation. Maybe a little smaller than that. Okay, so that is basically the essential elements of the rig. So now the rig is completely built. I am gonna do a few things real quick. I'm going to select each of these tires, come over here to the modify panel, and I'm going to add a tie properties. Select add and create a channel called tires. Just leave the value at one. We'll do the same thing here with this little box at the end. I'm going to add a tie properties, add a channel, call it driver, and leave the value at one. And then lastly, I'm going to select the chassis and add a tie properties, and then create a channel called chassis. All right, now I can go ahead and create a tie actor, and I'll align it to the chassis, but leave it on the ground, and then Go ahead and pick all of my tie binds. Add a tie icon. And then tie flow. Okay, so first I'll just use a birth operator. And say frame zero, one particle. Go ahead and change the display to geometry. Go ahead and add a position icon and pick the icon and then add the actor and pick the actor object now i can add a physics shape go ahead and ignore start penetrations and then i can add a physics bind and change the bind mode to tie actor binds i can go ahead and separate these out with property test and change the test type to custom float then I can say if test true if the property is equal to one, which is what I set up in the tie properties, and then just change the channel to let's see, do chassis on this one, create a new event, 
I'll rename this chassis. And then I can make a copy of this property test. Change the channel to driver. And switch output side here, new event. Rename this one driver. And then one more time. And then in this one, we'll do tires. All right, so real quick, go ahead and rename this tires. Okay, so if I drag this up some, Suspension's all working pretty good, so let's test it out. Can add a spin operator into the tires event. And then come under spin axis and change it from random 3D to particle space. Default will have Z enabled. Happens to be the axis we want these tires to spin on. Can uncheck allow mirror. Can reduce the variation to zero and increase the spin rate to maybe 500 and then change the timing to continuous. And so now we should be able to, oh, we need to change the Z value to negative one. All right, so now let's check and see if our vehicle will steer. Can create a line. Maybe do a better job than that. Let's fix it real quick. All right, so now we can add a path follow into the driver event. Pick the line. Increase the follow velocity to maybe three, 3.5. And then increase the attraction velocity, maybe 1.5. Zero off the spin. Okay, we can go ahead and add a little mass into the driver event. That might help that some. All right now we can see here that that tire just failed. And I believe that if we just increase the steps per frame, maybe a half frame. So this is the basic setup. I don't know if you watched my previous video on building one of these, but this is a little bit easier or, or quite a bit easier. Actually, this is all done with four events. The other one it was a little bit more complicated. It didn't quite function as well. This one gives you a little bit more control and there's other ways to add additional functionality to it. And I'm going to cover that in the next video. So check that out. Be sure to check the link that's in the description or follow the one that's on the screen now. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch today. If there was any part of it that you're having problems with, feel free to leave a comment. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thanks again. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.